Hey guys, Nova Explosion. Welcome back to more Wild Arms 3. So, I actually was playing a bit off screen. I'm a little higher level than I was. However, I couldn't leave the Ark of Destiny. So, we're going to load the save file. I wanted to do some grinding a bit, just getting some items. I was fighting some of those enemies that were like defeating us from last stream, the ones that like spam dark moves and the the life and ropes that do like a thousand damage. I was spamming uh not spamming I was kind of grinding those up, but I couldn't leave the Ark of Destiny until we went to the Archive. So what I did was I skipped through the dialogue and was able to leave the Ark. But I have this save file so we can watch whatever cutscene plays here. And we can just continue for this part. And then we'll load the save once this cutscene is done. Rainbow to Tomorrow catches your eye. Seven experts specializing in science, magic, and various other fields. At times, they were referred to as the Rainbow. They were the Council of Seven, which researched ways to rejuvenate Felgaia over many decades ago. This research first began when First Group of Seven came into contact with the information library he had just left behind by the demons. The members of the Council were interchanged depending on the direction of the research or with the changes of time. Many different phenomena were solved due to their work. The countless hours and efforts put in by these specialists to analyze here this is finally about to pay off. The environmental rejuvenation, planetary energy production, and supply, all of this was a vision every council member shared. The seven colors of the rainbow will soon change into a single ray of hope. I really... I talked about the lore being interesting, but I haven't, I haven't really given much praise to the story setup. I really like the story setup of like... The prophets and what they represent, the, the sci-fi mixed in. The story of Wild Arms 3 so far, the premise is really interesting. And now they're bringing about this experiment of, and the Council of Seven. I really like the setup here. Sealed by magic. What is this called? I feel like I shouldn't waste my one duplicator on that. Most of the ex excavation sites operated by the Ark of Destiny are ordered by the founder, Lamium himself. The Founder possesses a special ability, though, through which he can locate excavation points. According to the Founder, this is not his personal ability, but a, a form of divine revelation. He claims that a girl appears in his dreams, informing him of the location of undiscovered ruins. This goes against the Order's principle of reality over ideals in terms of taking action. But the fact of the matter is, many rare artifacts have been excavated as a direct result of the Founder's dreams. Could this simply be explained as a miracle? What does this saint, the girl that appears in the Founder's dream, wish to entrust us with? And where does she wish to lead us? If the saint wishes to guide us to the future, let us walk there on our own two feet. That is the way of the Order's Doctrine. Alright, I'm not reading all of these books, but... Yeah, this is the one we have to move on the story. Hey, this is a member's li list of the Council of Seven. So yeah, this dialogue I sped through just so I can leave the Ark of Destiny. And that's why this save file is here, just so I can show off this cutscene. And then we'll load the first save again, and we'll be back to my grinded up save file. The Yggdrasil project, which began approximately 100 years ago, was a project of planetary production proportions. It says here, the Council of Seven was replaced a number of times over the course of 100 years. Let's just cut to the chase. Who were the last Council of Seven, last seven council members? The last seven council members? Yes, here it is. This was 10 years ago. Lee Holt Alcast, Werner Maxwell, Pete... Inca Pilia. Okay, Werner Maxwell is Virginia's father. I don't know who Lee Hull and Pete are. Elliot Enduro, Malik Benedict, Melody Valent. Yeah, Malik and Melody. Prophets. Was another one of them Prophets too? What was the other Prophet's name? And Duran Bryant. So my father was part of the Council of Seven. And also... Yeah, Lee Holt, Lee Holt was his name. Lee Holt was a Council of Seven. Um, I honestly forgot one of the Council's names. Yeah, Lee Holt, Malik, and Melody. Now we know for sure that the Prophets were part of the Council. And that the photo is a picture of the Council of Seven. Didn't like... Didn't we already know that? <laughs> so the Prophets used their technology to maintain or recreate their appearance of ten years ago. I now know that my father belonged to the Council of Seven. Let's go back to Boot Hill to look for more clues. From here, Boot Hill should be on the Eastern Plains region. It's near a beach in Northeast. Elliot Enduro, a member of the Council of Seven. He has the same last name as mine. Is that just a coincidence? Oh, is Jet's last name Enduro? I completely forgot. What's the matter? Your stomach hurt? Whatever, I'm not a kid. We know where we're going next, so let's just get moving. This place makes me uncomfortable. Alright, so we might get some more Jet backstory any minute now. Okay, so now load this save file up. 
As you can see, I was 28 in that file. I got a full level. I just got to level 29. I also just did some stuff. I need a drink after all that reading. But yeah, I am here. Let's, uh, we have to go to Boot Hill, which should be in an eastern region. Heck if I know where, dude. It is the, I have the coordinates though. So having the coordinates really helps. Nope. Eastern region, eastern region. Maybe it's this island. I think I remember exploring this island and not really finding anything because obviously you wouldn't find Boot Hill if you never talked to the NPC. Wait, wait, I think this brings me to 500. Okay, no, this is X. Okay, this is Y, perfect. So it's gotta be like, maybe up here. Yeah, because this is, X is 16,000. I think the X is 15,000 and the Y is 500. So if we go up a little bit more. Oh wait, I'm moving X. I hate latitude and longitude. <laughs> I'm never good at it. All right, well that works. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. Good old boot hill. I will say having the coordinates helps though. I'm just terrible at it. All right, well, let's see what we have here. Boo Hill, look at that. Look at that sign. In case you couldn't tell, that's where we are. It's good to have you back. We were all worried about you. Everyone in the village cares about you very much. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, this is Virginia's hometown. Classic. This is the Armsmith. I should maybe have some Gela to do some stuff. Oh, I did want to upgrade Gallows' gun. I did end up upgrading Gallows' gun off screen. Because again, Gallows with Valiant is very good. I'm going to give you a little bit more crit. Maybe I'll give you some hit too. Everyone else is pretty good. I did gun upgrading off screen too. Yo, I got a Gimmel coin. Let's go. Oh, Merchant. Hi. Have to take advantage because the merchant moves whenever he feels like it. I got a few of these, but give me more just in case. I am also good on status ailment items, so we're fine with that. Today is August 28th, spring day. Yo, that's funny. It's like, it's August. What day is it? It's August 28th today. Oh my word. A scientist created an android boy powered by springs. He sprang to life. Get it. Sprang. It is the exact day I'm streaming this. I was going to say, yo, it's pretty late in August, but what day is it specifically? I looked at my calendar, lo and behold, it's the 28th. That's so funny. Uh, bum, bum. What do we have up here? Wait, barrel first. Also, I'm assuming there's a radar in this game because someone said, like, oh, you don't have the radar yet. I don't know how you get it. If I don't get it for a while and it's optional, I'll probably look up how to get it. Dune Canyon. Steer your ship north of the cape where the giant statue stands and you'll come straight. You'll come to a strait that connects the inland sea and open seaway. This is also the hunting ground of the monster Bala Kuo Naga, where many vessels and sandcraft made disaster. Bala Kuo Naga used to lurk south of Little Twister near the sunken reefs, but in recent years it followed its prey to its strait, made this area its new home. The ferocious monster has shut down scores of trade routes and has taken lives of hundreds of sailors. Somebody must do something to the people so the people can get on with their lives. The human brain does not make use of its full potential. There's another world that could still be tapped from the brain. It's possible to study how the brain works through electrical signals. The brain is a sea of electrical signals where thoughts, memories, and dreams are all merely electric signal reacting. There have been extreme cases where the memory media of information possesses structure similar to the memory storage of the area, area of the brain. Therefore, it can be said that dreams are electrical signals, signals connecting the brain, just like projecting an image on a screen. Perhaps with further research, it may become possible for the brain to act as the media itself, receiving signals from other external sources. Developing this other world of the brain has just begun. I believe this may have opened up infinite possibilities. I thought that was going to be like another world, but it was just like about the brain. 
It just felt like I was in science class the whole time. I was expecting like another world which maybe referenced like Wild Arms 1 or 2. Because you know, Wild Arms loves its references. And that's why I love the series. I didn't realize this thing was called Keeley. Hey, nice excuse you made up to leave the village. So, how's the outside world treating you? Pretty exciting. I should have left too, huh? Yeah, it's pretty great. Got a tiny flower. A tombstone covered in moss. The person buried underneath must be one of the founders of the village. I wonder what kind of hopes and aspirations he had for this village. Okay, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Which is classic Wild Arms 3. <laughs> I mean, Boo Hill's only so big. I'll find it eventually. Oh, something tells me in here, this might be where Virginia lives, maybe. This is like the biggest house in Boot Hill. So you just show up without dropping us a line, huh? How can you be so inconsiderate? Or all drifters like that? Drifters come in all different shapes and sizes. I mean, have you seen Jet? Uncle Tesla, Aunt Sho, I'm home. Oh yeah, you have an aunt and an uncle, I forgot. Oh, Virginia, thank goodness. Thank goodness you're safe. Are you hurt? I have countless numbers of nicks and bruises, but all in all, I'm fine. I'm still living up as a drifter. I mean, like, can you imagine not having a few, like, nicks and bruises? So you're still feeling the- you're still following the drifter's path. That's good to know. Although this might worry your aunt even more. Oh, please, dear. Let me introduce you to my travel companions. The main reason I came home today was because there's something I wanted to find out about Dad. My brother Werner. I saw Dad. He's alive. I threw, my, threw out most of your father's belongings, thinking he was dead. All that's left is this notebook he used to carry around. May I have a look? By all means. Much of it I don't understand. Hmm. None of his notes tell us anything new. Hmm. What? What is it? There's some new information here about the Yggdrasil project. The Yggdrasil system plays a major role within the Yggdrasil project. The system was responsible for promoting environmental life energy at an explosive rate. The planetary energy produced by the system was to distribute to the entire planet through microscopic machine colonies. What does that mean? Microscopic machine colonies? Ah, oh, forget it. Go on. The Yggdrasil system works the exact opposite of a regular tree. Instead of taking in nutrients from soil as normal trees would, the Yggdrasil system was supplying the ground with nutrients in order to promote the revitalization of the planet. I see. Hence the name Yggdrasil system. Can you explain that in words we can understand? Yggdrasil is a name that appears in ancient mythology or folklore as we know it. It's a large tree located in the center of the world, said to create and protect the world. Yeah, it's in like all the games. Tells of Symphonia, Dragon Quest XI, to name a few. At the foot of Yggdrasil are the deep forests and blue lakes, as far as you can see. By the way, in Symphonia, you say Yggdrasil. But I know in like, in Dragon Quest, they call it Yggdrasil. <laughs> so, I, I, I might be interchangeably using the pronunciations. Because in Dragon Quest XI, they call the great tree Yggdrasil. But in Symphonia, it's the same spelling. The villain's name is Yggdrasil. So, be prepared if I flip those up a lot. Hey, wait a minute. The, the Yggdrasil is a big tree with deep forests and crystal blue lakes surrounding it. That's just like... I'm gonna try to say Yggdrasil. That sounds better. What the head honcho at the Ark of Destiny said. Uh, then that Yggdrasil from folklore actually exists. I mean... The Yggdrasil system that Dad was involved in must be out there somewhere. Thanks, Uncle Tesla. I knew I'd find out something if I came back home. Did you find an important lead? If the Yggdrasil system exists, then that's where I can find Dad. I know I don't know for sure, and I might have said that on a whim, but I want to believe it's true. So, we look for the Yggdrasil system then. Of course, we are all with you on this. A system that can rejuvenate the planet. By looking into this, we may be able to track down the cause of Philgaia's decay. Thanks, everyone. I knew you guys were coming all along. After all, we're a team, right? 
I don't think Jet wants to be here. So there we have it. We'll be heading outside, getting ready. Virginia, assuming you find your father, what will you do then? I don't know. I don't know what I want to do or what will come of it. I had a chance to talk to him, but I got all confused and flustered, and I said just the opposite of how I felt at the time. It's not about what I expect or want to happen after I find him. I just want to see him and talk to him. There's so much I want to talk to him about. And after we talk, then we'll decide what to do. I understand. Glad that where your heart leads you. You're not a little girl anymore. No matter what happens, I believe you got the strength to accept it. Now take to the sky. Thanks, Uncle Tesla. But even though I'm not a little girl anymore and I'm all grown up, can I still come back here? I love both of you very much in this house, this village, everyone. I can still come back, right? What a ridiculous question. Of course. You'll always be our little girl. Don't worry about not having a place to come home to. Just holding your head high and continue forward is all you can do. I butchered that sentence, so I kind of made one up. I better be on my way. You're not going to tell me anywhere of where to go, huh? The village must have been too small for you to spread your wings. I'm happy to see you're doing well. Whatever it is you undertake, do your best and see it through to the end. We'll always be here for you. What, what a great aunt and uncle I have. Yo, how's your room looking, Virginia? Any callbacks to Wild Arms games? Ashley's room had, like, a poster of something from, like, some kind of anime that inspired Wild Arms. According to, uh, someone in chat that told me during that playthrough. Giants that don't get along. A long time ago, the evil serpent did hog live by the foot of Yggdrasil. Two giants who didn't get along decided to exterminate the serpent on their own, and each began their journey from two separate directions. Each giant had different reasons for wanting to kill the serpent. The first giant wanted to take the reward all for himself, while the other giant wanted to do the deed for the people. Little did the two giants know that Nidhogg had two heads that worked very well together. So the two giants ended up inside the serpent's stomach, regretting not cooperating with each other. Oh, nice balcony. I did see the... I saw the balcony from when I uh, was entering. I didn't actually think you can go out there. Then again, most games with balconies, you can go out into the balcony. Because it's like, you know, why wouldn't you be able to? Am I going to be hit with a cutscene? Okay, good. I was going to say, what do you expect me to do? Did you say your goodbyes? Yeah, kind of. I think I feel better than the last time I left, though. I was a little nervous about returning home, but I'm fine. Hey, don't worry about us. If you want to take your time, go ahead. Thanks, but I'm itching to get moving. Let's be on our way. Okay, you're going to leave me in the dark? I guess I got to talk to people and someone will give me a hint. I already talked to Neil. Yes, August 28th. Maybe I talked to the armsmith or something. That day when the demi-humans invaded our village, I was away on personal business. I just want to make it clear to you and everyone that I was not hiding in fear behind the counter. I really don't want any rumors about me spreading around the village. Yeah, you know how it be. There has got to be someone who can just give me a hint. Also, is there an inn here? Do you just rest at Virginia's house? Like, what would I do if I need an inn? Maybe if I leave the village, <laughs> they'll tell me something. If not, then I have no idea where to go. Oh, hey, look at this. What time is it, Mr. Wolf? What is Janice doing here? Also, he's human. What is happening? Janice Cascade, what are you doing in my village? Oh, so this is your hometown. I had no idea I needed to take care of some business, so I just followed you here. It's the FF8 music. This really reminds me, Janice reminds me a lot of Cypher from Final Fantasy VIII. Come to think of it, this is a really nice place. 
Hey, princess, I wonder what it'll sound like when such a nice town like this is completely flattened. Oh, is that a threat? Bring it. I got two guns and I'm not afraid to shoot them at your face. What are you planning to do? I'll defend this village of my life. So if you lay one finger on... Hey, he's up, princess. I have absolutely no intention of duking it out with you. So why'd you follow me here? Oh, I just came to gather some info, that's all. Say, wouldn't you like to know we're, we're, what we're doing next? Careful, this is probably a... Yes, yeah, a trap. But even if it is, you'd still try to stop us. No? What are you planning? We're heading to the last pillar point, or guardian shrine as you call it, to extract life energy. You still haven't learned your lesson from last time, huh? I guess not. The garden energy is too good to pass up. It gives the body plenty of zip. We actually think they're planning to create something with this guardian energy. I don't know if it has something to do with that evolution they're always ranting about, but... I'm pretty sure it goes against your pristine morals as defenders of justice or whatever. So you better stop him, princess. Fine. We'll take care of him. That's the spirit. Defenders of justice have to step up to the plate when the whole world is about to fall to crisis, right? Why is Janus human? He was a demon, like, can can he just switch from human to demon whenever he feels like it? Wait. Why are you telling us this? Or did the prophets, like, take away his demon powers? Like, what? I'm confused. Ah, did I forget to tell you? It's a trap. Or it was just a fake Janus. Like a projection. Where's the last guardian, Sean? Sorry, but for a guy like me who hasn't kept up with his studies, I have no idea. But, I'm sure Granny would know. Looks like we'll have to rely on her again. Classic gallows. Okay, Baskar Colony, it is. We gotta do all we can to protect the last guardian. I never was the sharpest tool in my shed. In the shed. But I'm smart enough to know this has gone too far. I'm not gonna let them get away with this. For all the pain and suffering they put the guardians through, I'll make them suffer a thousand times more.